dive right into protein and brain protein and fertility because um, as Heather mentioned, protein is one of the key quality parameters or standards by which uh, bread wheat is evaluated, whether it can be used for bread or whether it just goes as feed perhaps. Um, and so there's generally a standard of about 12%. There's a little, some of the bakers we're working with are willing to fiddle a little bit with that lower, but generally the standard is 12% grain protein is required. And nitrogen fertility is probably one of the you know, key practice that influences that. Um, go ahead there. All right. Um, with red wheat, it's not just the total amount of nitrogen that's available to the crop, but it's also when nitrogen is available, what the timing of that availability is. So I just put the wheat growth stages here of, of wheat. Um, nitrogen uptake basically follows this kind of general curve um, that there's you know a little bit taken up early when it's tillering, and then during stem extension it takes up a lot more, and then that levels off uh, as the crop matures. Uh, nitrogen that's available earlier in the season tends to influence yield, the uh, total crop yield. Nitrogen that's available later in the season tends to influence more what the grain protein is going to be. Okay, so that's an important concept. Uh, when we're looking at organic and conventional systems, you know, using organic sources of uh, or um, yeah, organic sources of fertility as opposed to like soluble sources, um, the pattern of release is different, and there it's released more slowly over time. And so, in thinking about this, I thought, well, maybe actually for organic systems, that's an advantage in red wheat because you want to have protein available at the end to, to um, increase your protein, uh, nitrogen available at the end to increase your protein levels. So, um, I'm going to just talk quickly about one study I'm doing, looking at that, and then we'll go into um, uh, a bigger study that Heather and I are doing together. But this is. A uh, set of plots, uh, long-term cropping system study that was done in Maine uh, from 91 to 2008, and it involved, it was, the focus was on potatoes, and I worked um, in this in terms of uh, nitrogen uh, fertility and dynamics. But it, it had, uh, among another, a bunch of treatments, it had one comparison of basically an organic, primarily an organic fertility system versus a conventional fertilizer-based fertility system. Um, and the organic system relied uh, on manures and composts and uh, legume green manures. Uh, really quickly, there's, there was a difference in the soil itself. Soil quality improved drastically. Uh, and you can see that th this is, I think this was in 2003 that we took this picture. So on the left, that is the um, organic or the amended system as we called it. And on the right is the fertilizer based system huge difference in organic matter. And as you might imagine, a huge difference in how that soil performs in terms of um, supplying nutrients to the crop. So when, after the trial ended, and we were starting to thread wheat work, I thought, oh, here's a good opportunity to take these plots and actually plant wheat on them and look at um, nitrogen dynamics there. And so we planted three different varieties, um, a high protein variety, low yielder, a low yielding variety, no, uh, a low protein, high yielding variety, and um, the heritage variety, red fife. And I'm just going to talk about one variety today. Uh, and then uh, and we use manure um, in the organic system, pre-plant manure. This is spring wheat. And then in the um, fertilizer-based system, we use, the, we use different rates of ammonium nitrate, basically trying to match up, um, you could we match protein levels some point to do a, a comparison. So if you can go to the next slide. So that's what these treatments are. I'm missing some information here. But basically, on all of these, on the x-axis, we have the manure treatment in red, and then the different um, fertilizer treatments increasing from 40 uh, to 85 pounds per acre. And so uh, plant nitrogen uptake, basically, um, you can see how the fertilizer treatments kind of a gradually step increase um, in nitrogen uptake that was taken at the soft dose stage. Grain yield, um, even though the, um, the manure-based 
uh, system did not have as high a nitrogen uptake, it actually had higher yields than any of the fertilizer. And grain yields are influenced not just by nitrogen, you know, it's influenced by all sorts of things. And this, you know, you saw this whole quality differences between those two pots. So there's definitely things going on that I'm not sure it's just nitrogen here, but um, could be uh, water availability and other things. But I was really interested in looking at this idea of uh, grain protein and maybe grain protein quality. Um, so here at grain protein, you can see that um, again, despite the differences in plant uptake, it's it, the organic or the manure-based system uh, did pretty well comparatively. And then looking at protein as a as relative to how much N it took up, basically this graph here is trying to say, to show what efficiency and the manure treatment was more efficient, used its uh, nitrogen more efficiently to decrease grain protein. We're doing some other work looking at different, um, some of the rheological properties of the flower uh, from this grain to see that if uh, the, the different systems affected the protein quality. And then I'm working with a food um, scientist to look at nutritional nutraceutical properties of the um, different grain. So this is preliminary. But what I think this shows is that the, uh, an organic-based system can um, do very well uh, in terms of um, achieving the, pro the yields of protein as compared to a fertilizer system. And it shows, the, I think, the importance of that timing. So, that, so that's, that's spring wheat. Spring wheat, as Heather said, really we don't have that much of an issue uh, with protein in spring wheat. Um, our, and so, you know, more importantly, the question is for nitrogen fertility and organic systems is how do you design a fertility system that works to produce the grain protein levels needed? And that is a problem in winter wheat. And the, the, to understand that challenge, just looking back at this growth curve again, for winter wheat, primarily in organic systems, we're applying pre-plant um, sources of fertility, right? It's the easiest way to do it when you're dealing with organic um, sources. And so that shows on here, the plant gets to, oh, you know, around here uh, before it goes dormant and winter comes. And it's taken up mm, 10, maybe 20 pounds of N, you know, the the requirement for wheat is generally around 80, uh, 70, 80 pounds of N. And so there's a lot of nitrogen sitting there that could be lost over the winter. And then the demand, the high demand comes in after we have lost some of that nitrogen. Um, the high demand is you know, later on in the spring. In conventional systems, the way they've handled this is they do a split application and they top dress uh, in the spring. And that's done to some extent in organic. So, so we came up um, with a, a, um, a study to look at this, well, could we use top dressing to, to help um, boost protein levels in organic systems? Uh, can top dressing um, nitrogen increase grain protein in organic production as well? What time of application is most effective? What sources of nitrogen are most effective? And then we added another question, um, because with organic sources, they need to be mineralized for the nitrogen to be released, mineralized by um, the microbial community in the soil. And if you're just top dressing and putting your fertility source right on the surface, how are they going to interact with the microbes? So we introduced a, a hoeing treatment, planting on wide rows to, um, to hoe and try to incorporate that top dress material. Okay. All right, so we have three times of nitrogen top dressing. Um, Right now in Maine, it's, uh, growers will put on chelated nitrate early at tillering. It may not be the most effective time in terms of trying to boost protein levels. So we had a late tillering application, flag leaf application, and boot. And then we looked at two different sources. We looked at a soluble source of nitrogen, so Chilean nitrate, which is probably not going to be with, with us that much longer for organic production. Um, but it acts just like fertilizer, you know, I mean, it is. It's, it's um, sodium nitrate, pretty much similar to it. Ammonium nitrate is immediately available. Um, and then we compared it with an organic source. In this case, we used dehydrated chicken manure, cheap, cheap. And um, that has about 25% uh, soluble N and the rest as organic N. And so its release pattern is gonna be really different than the Chilean nitrate. Um, we put it on at, twice the 
rate has the Chilean just based on uh, other studies that showed about 50% availability. And we assumed 100% availability for the Chilean. Okay. And then as I was saying, we added this treatment in Maine for looking at hoeing based on some of practices we saw in Denmark that um, where they're growing on wider rows and using the hoe primarily for weed management, and Warren in the back is going to talk about that tomorrow. Um, but we were interested in could it be used to incorporate the top dress and increase uh, nitrogen release from the top dress treatment. Okay. All right. Um, so we did, and maybe we did that at tillering and at flag leaf um, boot, which was too late to even think about driving in. Tiller, uh, flag leaf is still kind of, our farm manager was like, are you sure <laughs> you want me to drive through that? Um, so, go ahead. Okay, we did this in 2010, 2011. Two sites, uh, one in Maine, one in Vermont. Um, all of the treatments, uh, all of the top dress treatments had manure applied pre-plant. So this is winter wheat, applied manure in the fall, planted the wheat, and then next spring did the top dress treatments. We used the variety Harvard because we, um, it's known to have lower protein, and we thought, oh, we want a, a nitrogen responsive variety you'll see what happened with that. Um, but we did have two controls, where one where we just didn't add any nitrogen, no pre-plant manure application, and then one where we just did the pre-plant manure, no top dressing. 300 plants was not counting pillars. Correct, that's so a seeding. Had a lot more <coughs> yes, right, 300 plants. That was our target, right. Okay, so um, we have, uh, basically we have the treatments down here, so our two controls and then the um, top dress treatments at different times for the Chilean and for the chicken manure. Um, you can see right off that the yields are really high, uh, um, especially in 2010. This is averaged over both years and both sites. Um, but uh, if you look at the control versus the manure control, um, applying manure before you plant is a good idea to boost yields. Uh, the only top dress treatments that affected yields, though, compared to the, the manure control, were the flag leaf and boot applications of Chilean. Uh, and I was really surprised by that, and, and I still am trying to figure out why the earlier tillering one didn't uh, have an effect, but in terms of the Chilean. In 2010, no, no, last year we had a lot of rain in the spring. Some of that could have been lost. Um, so. All right, more importantly, we're interested in the grain protein. Again, we have the same treatments on the x-axis. Um, if you look at the two controls, you can see that while the manure, pre-plant manure, did affect the grain yield, it didn't actually increase grain protein. There was no effect by it. Uh, so, so the pre-plant source didn't really help with uh, boosting the protein level. Um, <clears throat> why don't you go ahead and put it yeah. So. This is the increase in protein for each of the top dress treatments relative to that manure control. And here what you can see is that in general, later applications of top dressing were more effective than the earlier applications. And you can also see that the Chilean nitrate soluble source was more effective than the um, dehydrated chicken manure. And that's even at a you know, increase, a double rate you know, for the chicken the actual increases that we saw average over both years, you know, the highest was one point, uh, an increase of 1.3 percentage points. Right? Um, something to note is that none of these treatments actually made that 12% standard, you know, minimum level. And uh, again, we were dealing, we, we chose Harvard, and um, I think if had we shown chosen a variety that was known to have higher protein, we would have actually been at that um, level just under and just over 12%. Because a lot in our variety trials, as Heather showed, we saw uh, you could get a 2% difference in protein by just choosing the right variety. So that's really the first step, is variety choice. Um, anyway, so, okay, go ahead. Oh, yeah, and I forgot. So our hoeing treatment, um, I had high hopes for that hoeing. I thought for sure it was going to help uh, 
increased release of nitrogen from the, the chicken manure, but it really had no effect um, on grain yield at either of those timings or on uh, protein. Could have been significant if you'd done pounds of protein instead of percent protein. Oh, slightly. I could try that. I don't know. I, I could try it, yeah. It'll definitely be more. Yep, that's a good idea. Um, so, in summary, we found that top dressing does increase grain protein. Uh, later applications increase protein more than the earlier ones, so putting on layers is better. Chilean nitrate was more effective, um, and Helling had no effect. So, so we showed that, okay, we can boost protein levels with top dressing uh, in organic systems. But really, the value of top dressing, um, the value of top dressing is gonna be measured by you know, where that load of grain goes. If it actually makes 12% Protein, it can go to uh, the mill for bread flour and have a, you know, a higher value than if it is under that 12% protein, it's gonna be feed value. So I did a little quick um, economic uh, accounting, I guess, and to try to look at, well, okay, let's say, let's just say that we had, um, our top dressing treatment did actually boost it up to that 12%, and we're looking at the difference of top dressing, you know, did top dressing pay for itself, basically. Uh, and so I took in the cost of the nitrogen source and application, um, the negative value of their crop damage, so I assume that we were putting it on later, uh, when there is gonna be some damage due to the wheel tracks of hoeing, unless you're on a, on a train line system. Um, there's potential for increased yield, and so I took that into account, the average of eight bushels per acre that we saw for the Chilean uh, and those later applications. And then the value, the increased value, because you've been able to take it to the mill for bread and flour. And so you can see that the Chilean and the, and the chicken manure both um, increase the value uh, of the crop um, to some extent there. And so it, it is, it does look like the economics, you know, pay. Um, but the question remains, well, what if that load of grain or what if that, you know, field of grain would have made protein anyway? Or what if you did increase your protein levels and it still didn't make the right protein? Um, and so that brings up questions of, well, is there some way that we could uh, really look at in-crop or, or in-season diagnostics to evaluate what's, you know, what's the yield potential of the crop and, what, and uh, what's the potential for meeting protein? Are we going to be shy or are we not? We have that in the um, people use PSNT and corn silage in manure-based systems, and it works really well, and people are using it in vegetables as well. Um, we don't have that in wheat, the PSNT will not work because it's, wheat is an earlier crop, it's all calibrated differently, uh, but there is some, um, I think there is some work in Virginia, and Heather and I are just talking with another researcher about trying to look at these questions, is there something we can do now to um, just kind of make that choice, a decision tool for farmers, like, okay, is it worth the top dressing or not? Um, so, yep. And just dumb acknowledgments, and this is a little easier way to get to the Northern Green, uh, not the Northern, the uh, Northern New England local bread wheat website. <laughs>